while watching anime I pull her from my screen Just like in my dreams I want to feel her touch Mainly on my crutch I want my own Italy girl And she would sing Welcome to the Catboy Rant. My name is, of course, Kenneth. I am here to talk about Sexy September. And we are going to review Love Doll. Um, a little backstory on this. When I first saw this, I was actually at a SakuraCon. I don't remember which one. And I wanted something to take back to the room because I was all by myself. Uh, didn't have anybody with me, so you know all you young men out there and young women when you find something and you're like I'll go ahead and enjoy that back in the room well I, I with, with hentai you got to really be careful um, the front doesn't always really show what's going on and in this case the Draw, the animation style there looks very clean, very pristine, very good. Um, however, it's not. Uh, it's part of the vanilla series. Granted, of course, there's really nothing vanilla about this series. Uh, but it's something that you find with a lot of people, a lot of companies that are out there that are putting out hentai. It's part of the vanilla series or part of this, part of that. This is actually from uh, 2004, so it was probably a 2004 convention by Critical Mass Video. Yeah. Let's put it this way. The animation style from this, and I'm kind of wondering if this anime actually went from one company to another company to another company to another company through this the whole series, because you can actually see uh, from the first episode to the second episode, there's a big change in animation. I mean, even in, within the first episode itself, it changes the animation all the style a little bit. So, sit back, relax. There'll be two videos of this. Episode 1 of Love Doll. Now, we start out the episode with two women in a bath. One a little girl, one an older woman. Turn out that this is Rachel, the little girl, and her mother. The little girl's going ahead and talking about how she loves her mommy and loves her daddy and that one day she wants to go to the ball and meet up with a wonderful man just like her father and her mom's like no you're never going to go to that ball and she's like but I want to go to the ball and meet a very nice man like daddy and mom's like well we will make sure that you don't have to do that so little girl doesn't understand and like little kids it's like okay so yeah, uh, this goes away. I mean, this whole scene, they just talk about, you know, mother and daughter in the bath together, just talking, enjoying it. Um, and then after that, you get to a scene where she's kneeling before a Virgin Mary statue, which has a collar and chain on it. And then nuns are in there using dildos on her and sexings. Yeah, you find out that her mom died and she was taken to a convent where they have lesbian sex. Yeah. So. Fun! And that's all within the first ten minutes of this show. You know, I mean, this is a 30-minute episode. And you wish it would have been shorter because you feel really dirty halfway through. Uh, we were watching this before with my, myself and my wife, and she was like, is it over? I wanted to say yes, but it wasn't. We were still on episode one. She has a good friend and a roommate named Beth. Rachel? 
どうしたのレイチェル早くしないと遅刻しちゃうわよベス Beth is the nerdy one, you can tell because she has glasses on. Yes, you can always tell who the nerdy friend is, and that's going to be the person in the glasses. I'm sorry, it's a frickin' trope. The main, the head of the school is um, an interesting gentleman because other than heading the school, he is also sexing all the nuns. So, yeah, this is, I mean, I, I thought that, you know, this is weird because I don't remember any of that from church. You know, I don't remember, you know, ye shall go into a school and have sex with the headmaster and lo, have lesbian sex with thine sisters. I don't remember that. I would have paid more attention in, in, in church if that was happening, okay? If that was in the Bible, I'd be paying more attention. I'd have like two copies. Now you find out that the reason that, well, one of the reasons she's actually being, you know, Rachel's being, you know, sexed by the nurses is because long ago when she was a little girl, just after her mother had died, um, she came upon the headmaster and a bunch of uh, nuns having sex. And they caught her and punishment is kind of like, well, since you saw this, we're going to make it so that you will, we'll turn you into a love slave. And uh, to make sure she doesn't remember, they keep on telling her it was all a dream, and they drug her. So, yeah. Interesting shit. Uh, it, it gets really awkward in some moments. I mean, especially, there's a scene where uh, young Rachel is in the headmaster's office giving him fellatio. For those of us who do not know that word, it means blowjob. So... She's giving a BJ, and uh, the head, headmaster says, Here, I'm going to give you something, and inserts a little pill into her vagina, which she then pees. And then they have sex. And the next day she wakes up, she doesn't remember. So, yeah. Interesting stuff. Later on, she um, is out in the, out in the forest, just minding her own business, you know, like girls sometimes do. I know when I was growing up, you'd walk out into the forest and there'd be girls in every tree. You know, you'd wonder why they were up there. They wouldn't tell you. And they'd wait for a cute guy to fall on. And that's what happens in this, is a cute guy goes underneath her and just falls on She just falls on him. Uh, he hurts his hand, so she licks it. Don't know why. It's probably because the whole thing that saliva in her mouth was cleaner, which bunch of bullshit and uh, then she wraps her hanky around it and he says don't worry I'll give it back to you well later on uh, a young girl actually is watching this whole thing and it turns out the girl that's doing that is this very hoi and tight young lady who thinks that she's so good and she tells Rachel that she doesn't like it when she hangs around with the prince, Prince Andrew. And, of course, Rachel didn't know that was the prince that she fell on. She just thought it was some guy. So, yeah, it's the prince. And she's like, well, it's, it's all right. I'm sorry. So instead of being like, you know, just leave him alone, uh, she has her cronies. The girl's name is Marsha that's doing all this. Marsha has her cronies hold down Rachel. They then violate her with her shoe. And then she goes and she sniffs some roses and says they smell like a whore. I've never known roses to smell like a whore. Um, I thought they smelled good. You know, I mean, I'm afraid to walk up to a lady of the night and, you know, go, Ah, roses. But I'd, I'd like to go into a, uh, a florist and go, Ah, whores. I'd probably get, you know, banned from either one. So, um, I, you know, I don't want to go to the lady of the night anyways, but, you know, it'd be funny to see what happens. Probably get shivved or shanked. 
or stabbed, all the same thing. Um, and then they use the rose vase, the, the bigger end on her, and they leave her there all torn up. That night, the headmaster has sex with her again. Um, she then wanders back to her room. Along the way, Marsha's there and she's like, I'm going to cut you, bitch. And she doesn't cut, you know, the girl. She cuts the girl's hair and makes it all short. Well, she does this because she doesn't think Andrew will like the, the hair, the hairdo. So, yeah. Uh, when Beth wakes up the next day, she sees her roommate laying on the floor. Kind of, you know, you get that mind break where you have no pupils in those eyes. Yeah, she's just sitting there. And uh, Beth is like, what happened? And Rachel's like, don't worry, it's all right. I just, it just got cut. Then they have lesbian sex. I'm not fucking joking. They have lesbian sex. I mean, just like that. I mean, it's like, Rachel's like, oh, it's nothing. Are you sure? Yes. No, 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 go, 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 go. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. And then after they have sex, which is awkward. Um, Beth then cuts Rachel's hair. You know, it's just like, there you go, you look pretty now. Pretty enough to have sex with, but we already did that, so we're not going to have sex again. No, we'll save it for something else. That night? Yeah, we're skipping. It's like every night she does this. That night, she goes meet up with the headmaster, and she gets, and he gives her, a, uh, she gives him a hand job. She wakes up the next day outside for some reason, and Andrew's out there, and he's like, "Hey there, how you doing? I'm Andrew. Don't you remember?" And she goes, "Yes. Would you like to come with me?" Okay. They go out and they pick grapes and they laugh and they have a montage. I know you're the prince and he's like yeah and she goes it's all right and he's like okay and it's just you know oh but you know it's not gonna continue no 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 what even worse is they kiss the end of the montage mm-hmm then we skip to the night it, it's kind of weird I mean it's like several weeks I mean se well, honestly several weeks go by uh, the whole, like, montage thing is supposed to be several weeks, not just one day. So, I'm kind of thinking that after every day, Marsha finds out, goes, uh, uh, does something bad to Rachel, you know, sexually. And then after that, Beth is like, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so... You know, that's, like I said, several weeks, probably a, probably a couple months. And then one night, like I said, we're skipping. Uh, one, uh, one night, a man comes for her. And I don't mean that in a, oh, my eye! No, um, man comes for her and tells her that he's taking her away from the awful convent and he's going to take her to her uncle. And she's like, yay, I have family. I didn't know about, yay. And they go, and she leaves a note for everybody, leaves a note for Andrew. It's like, one day I will come back and I will be a lady. I love you, Andrew. I am so sorry. I will miss you. And she left one for Beth, too. And Beth gives uh, Andrew the, the letter. She's on the train. She, and everybody's like, do you like the tea? And she's like, yes, I love the tea. It was made special for you. It was? Yes. Drink it down. It will calm you. And you're like... Oh, uh, what's going on? 
And that's when they send some guys in to tear off her dress. You know, it's like, shh, 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 shh. and then they, once she's torn, you know, all of her clothes are torn off. They say, okay, now go into this, like, red leather uh, bondage outfit. We want you to do that. Why? Because your uncle wants us to do it. Uh, I'd be like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I'm pretty sure what you guys are doing is right. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to go back to the convent. At least there, I had lesbian sex, uh, rape every night, and I was being brutalized by a girl named Marsha. Uh, but at least there was Andrew. We kissed. It was awesome. I want to get free hair care for sex. So, as some guys are in there raping her, um, well, actually, no, no, I'm sorry. They don't rape her. They just tear off her clothes. That happens later. Uh, they tell her to masturbate, and she does. And while she's doing this, a little locket pops out. And this is a locket that was given to her by Andrew. And she and it starts to play, and she starts thinking, oh, Andrew. And then she comes so hard, she passes out. And then they break the locket. And that's the end of episode one. Fucked up shit, eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as we're going to get into for episode two. Episode, I would like to call episode two, holy shit. Holy shit, I don't like that uncle. If I had an uncle like that, I'd tell him to go to hell. Okay, beginning of the episode. It's episode two of Love It All. We get a re quick recap. Rachel went to a convent. Was mercilessly having sex there. Her mother's dead. She had a friend named Beth. There was a guy named Andrew. And sex. So, recap. Done. Yeah. Um, the only difference about the recap is... This time, when she's a little girl, she's like, I want to go to the ball! I want to meet beautiful men! And her mom's like, yes, that's a great idea. And she's like, yay! Now remember, in the first episode, she was like, no, I don't want you to go there. She's like, why not? Because, okay... Yeah. Now, we open with Rachel chained up and about to be punished by nuns. And while they're doing this, I mean, they do shit, a lot of shit to her. You know, things go in places that are not supposed to go in there. Um, I mean, I don't even know how the hell she's standing with, I mean, because they got a chain here, chain here, chain here. It's like all over the place. And it's all to different spots. So, it's like, why the hell would they do that? I mean, I can understand, like, in Captain Harlock, where they have them all chained up because they don't want Captain Harlock to move because Captain Harlock's a fucking badass. This is Rachel. She, she, she gets raped. A lot. By nuns. So, yeah. And while they're doing it, they call her a whore. But while she's getting this done to her, she's telling them, no, stop it, stop it. Last time I checked, that doesn't happen. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, that's how this episode opens. Recap and then sex. Which, I gotta say, if we're talking about this as a hentai, so far this has been what it's been saying. It's a hentai. There's been sex plenty For everybody. There's BDSM sex, lesbian sex, straight up sex, hand jobs, um, mind break, and rape. So yeah. This is when we get into the fucked up shit. The uncle... Now, the end of the episode last time you get to see a picture of the uncle. And the uncle looks like a very young man. Uh, has two eyes, a nose and a mouth. And his uh, servant is a woman wearing nothing but a apron. This one, he is a young man with very long hair. Yeah, the other one had very short hair. This one has very long hair. One eye, because it's all bandaged up. And of course, nose and mouth. And his assistant is still just wearing an apron. So, so we're fine there. Continuity, people. <clears throat> this is why I say some things changed. And this is why I think that some uh, companies came in later to do episode two. I <laughs> So, um,
she's in the office with her uncle, and her uncle's like, uh, when you're here, all of our people here will teach you about what you need to be to be a love doll. And she's like, what's a love doll? Your mother was a love doll. You will be the love doll, a royal royal love doll. Which they, they don't really explain more past that point. It's like, if, if that's a job, you know, you have to gain that title, and all the shit she's going through, I don't think I'd want that. You know, I'd be like, how about I just go back to the con the rapey convent? Huh? Go back to the rapey convent, have lesbian sex with my roommate, have uh, eventually marry Andrew the Prince because he really likes me, and we'll have a threesome maybe with the nuns. How about that? That sounds like a good idea. But no, he's like, no. Everyone here is going to teach you how to be a love doll. And while this is happening, the maid gets down on her knees and starts to eat out Rachel. And this is another thing of continuity. Now, the maid gets under there, and the first thing she sees is underwear. In the last scene, Rachel had no hair down there. She was shaven. Uh, this scene, underwear. Okay. And she starts just, you know, I, I won't do it because I bet YouTube would then go ahead and censor everything here. So, um, she talks to her uncle. Her uncle's like, "You do not show, you do not do anything other than what I say. You look at me and you talk to me when you're getting eaten out. Okay, you do that." And she's like, "Okay, uncle," and continues on. Now the underwear is gone, and she's got a she's got a bush. Jocko's rule. So, yeah. They talk. She eventually orgasms. He gets mang angry because he's like, not only, since you're going to be a love doll, not only will you give get pleasure, you will give pleasure. Which I don't know how the hell you get that, unless, of course, your fetish is just, you know, e eating at the Y. So... Yeah. Uh, she goes through love doll training. Uh, she gets masturbated uh, in front of her uncle, which just kind of sits there like Gendo, just... Mm-hmm. Um, she's... It, it's just... It's really, really bad. Um, I mean, and, and she's... Like, like I said, she masturbates in front of her uncle. Not only her uncle, the maid, another maid, an old man, and her uncle. Which I gotta say, that's an interesting audience, and the and the old man's just standing there like, hmm. the maid's like, oh, the other maid's like, I did a good job, and the uncle's again like Gendo, just I bet Shinji Ikari would do some shit in there. I mustn't run away! I mustn't run away! I mustn't run away! You look like my mom. As we all know Shinji has problems. Oh, by the way, after, of course, after masturbation, sex. Um, she's uh, the next thing you see here. She is um, looks like she's mind broken in bed, and then another scene where she's taken down to her history professor, and she just blows, starts blowing him, while she's getting the lesson, and it's kind of awkward because he's talking about war. And then he'll stop and say, okay, now just keep your head there. Don't use your hands. There you go. Okay. I'm going to come now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, damn. Just damn. I wonder if that's a benefit for being a professor in that in that area. It's like, what we're going to do is we'd like you, you know, I would love to see that, that whole thing. <clears throat> Today we are going to interview for a pretty history professor. Uh, what is your specialization? Well, I'm in the local history of uh, the kingdoms and uh, the uh, the wars. Oh, that's wonderful. Can you keep it up while uh, while giving a history lesson? Excuse me? Yes, can you keep it up during a history lesson? Uh, I've never tried it before. Well, let's try it right now. Um, come here, mate. Yes? Uh, we'd like you to go ahead and um, we're testing this gentleman out uh, for Rachel. Um, uh, tell me, sir, about the uh, War of 1812. Well, the War of... Oh, shit. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're not getting the job. See you later. 
Think of that. Think of that shit. What if, what if he didn't know about that? He's like, I'm going to give you a lesson today. Now, why are you unbuck unbuckling my pants? Yeah. Um. Now, they haven't given her any food, just water. And she's finally given food, but it's dog food in a dish. And she's told that if she doesn't want it, then she's just got to go ahead and go without. And so she eats. While she's eating, it's kind of weird. Because she's, she's bent on all fours, and all of a sudden some guy just kind of is just like, Hi! In between her legs. And the uncle's like, hey, he's here. He's thirsty. Why don't you pee on him? She's like, what? Yeah, he's, he's thirsty. He's pee on him. No, do it. He's thirsty. Okay. And she does it. And next scene. Um, <laughs> she later confronts her uncle. Tells him, you know, I don't like this. Why would you do this to your family? I mean, we are family, right? You didn't just be like, I like that one. It's got boobs. Yeah. No, you didn't do that, did you? We are actually family. And he's like, yes, of course we're family. She's like, but then why are you doing this to me? He goes, you can leave at any time you want. She's like, really? He goes, yes. But I will totally sever, sever ties with you, and the family will not help you out in any way, meaning that you will be a poor, worthless beggar. And I would be like, see you later, uncle. I'll find some other ways. But she doesn't. And the reason that the uncle says it is because this entire time they've been training her. Even at the rape nurse place. I'm not rape nurse. Rape uh, nurse place. The, 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 uh, the convent. They've been training her to be a sex slave. And it's gotten so bad that it doesn't matter that she doesn't want to. Her body will do it anyways. Which is a bunch of bullshit. But that night, four guys show up and they start to gangbang her, which is kind of fun. There's one scene that's kind of funny, actually. Um, you know, one guy's down below just plowing away. Another guy kind of just, you know, does a flying uh, drop on her front and is like, go! Which I was like, why are they re doing wrestling moves with her? Are they going to throw her against the turnbuckle? You know, and then two other guys go up there and just like, boob. 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 Dick boob. Boob. That's all they do. These four guys, that's all they do. And they're all laughing. And it's weird because after a while of, you know, getting all this, she eventually, you know, works everybody else. And yeah. The uncle's there. I mean, think about that. Your, your uncle's constantly there. It's like, what are you doing? I'm masturbating. Great. I'll be in in just a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to get my chair set up, get some popcorn. Yeah. Which, this also brings up another thing. Again, what if you are just hired to be the sex teacher? I mean, these four guys show up, and they look very, very... Um, together they know what they're gonna do you know one guy's gonna be you know going away the other one's gonna be on top of her and she's gonna be that and the other two guys have boob duty did they draw straws for this did they just be like okay Tom uh, you got to have sex with her last time so this time you're on boob duty uh, Steve you are also on boob duty because you had sex with her too you know it was like that nah, nah. and um, me and Jeff are gonna go ahead and just you know, I'm going to have sex with her, he's going to get sucked off, okay? Um, if there's time, we'll switch stuff up, you know, we'll go like what we did before, you, you switch up, and then, you know, kind of finish up with uh, the Voltron, you know. Ugh! Think of that. Planning. Later on, she goes to town, gets a dress mess made. Uh, she sees Andrew and Beth walk along the street and freaks out, thinking that, Andrew's left her. Young man finds her. He's a gardener, I think. I keep on, I kept on hearing the name like five, five or six different times. 
Alcid, I think his name was. Well, he meets up with her, has been seeing her through the windows, and is like, oh, she's such a wonderful lady. And she meets up with him, and, and she just then starts to blow him. And then she says, I want you to make me forget everything. And they have sex. From the window, the uncle's watching. Again, like I said, the guy likes to watch. Um, he's watching, and he says, this is a perfect test. Let's see what happens. And, yeah, sex. Uh, she then finds out that um, she's thrown into a room with her uncle, two dogs, and some other people. And they're telling her, what you did was very wrong. You should have never done that. She goes, well, what about Alcid? Oh, he's been taken care of. And then you get the scene of the happy maid that helped shave Rachel in the beginning on top of Alcid, who's clearly dead. I mean, his head is back. He's got blood dripping out of his nose and mouth. And she's like, oh, it's so cold. Oh. Which you're like, what the fuck? And... The, the, the uncle says, if you're going to be, tr if you want to be treated like a dog, then these dogs will treat you the same way. And that ends episode two. Because you know what's going to happen to her, but they're not going to put it on there. I mean, they've showed necrophilia, just uh, peeing, um, BDSM, lesbian sex, gangbangs, you know, the whole kick boo But we will draw the line at bestiality. So. That's the end of episode two. After seeing that, I really didn't like it. Um, not so much as, I mean, the story's okay, but it's it's kind of weird how they kind of jump everywhere. And it just makes me uncomfortable to see a young woman astride a corpse. So, till next time, episode two, excuse me, episode three and four of Love Doll. Fun! Uh, uh, Time for go to bed.